I am redoing a lot of my older videos for copyright issues and reposting them. This is the one I reposted. Thanks for watching. I started this project because of a leaky thermostat housing, which I thought was an intake gasket was leaking. Once the intake gasket was back ordered, I started ordering parts. I wanted a new intake just because it looks better and a little bit of gain of horsepower. That took a couple weeks to get in. So I had time, I read on the internet and I basically did every single modification for a TBI to keep the TBI that their internet recommended. And what the internet says the horsepower gain should be from each individual project. So I have hooker headers, 20 horsepower. Dual exhaust with glass packs should be 15 horsepower. TBI spacer, 18 horsepower. Air cleaner, five horsepower. Dual plane intake manifold should be a whole whopping 30 horsepower. The uh, air cleaner spacer or removing the spacer should be 12 horsepower. The injector spacer Raising the injectors up, that uh, 3 eighths of an inch, should be 13 horsepower. Fuel regulator spring should be 22 horsepower, although I did remove that. It has a stock one back in there. I'm probably gonna wait to see how it rides with, or drives with the stock one, and then I'm gonna add the other one. But that one sh should have been 22 horsepower. And the ultimate TBI modification or to grind down the face and remove the ridges should be 12 horsepower. This engine is 190 horsepower stock. If I do a little ricer math, it should put me at 337 horsepower or without the fuel regulator spring, 315. C1500 had a coolant leak that you can see coming out right there and then you'd see a little bit on this right there at first I thought it was a head gasket but after doing a little more research found out it was my intake gasket leaking starting to disassemble this and first thing that happened is the crankcase ventilation so, ordered new parts to fix that too. Undo all the electronic stuff. Probably should label it or know where it at least goes, but nah, I'm just gonna take them off. Let Jesus take the wheel. Seemed to do pretty good for Carrie Underwood, so. While I was doing this, I noticed something. That idler is way out of whack. Guess I need a new one of them too. I might try to take it off and see if I could fix it and then reinstall it. I don't want to just throw parts at it. So I was going to try to replace this belt tensioner, but uh, I had a friend who had an extra one and he said he would give it to me, so I'm just going to replace it. First thing first, take off the belt. Put the GoPro in a good position, then take off the belt. Belt tensioner is pretty easy, it just has a single bolt in the middle. Just pull that out, slide it right off, put the bolt back on for safe storage until you get the new tensioner. So I have everything but the spark plugs or the ignition. Uh, removed. I'm gonna label all those before I remove any of it so I know exactly where it, uh, I took it off. 
the biggest pain in the butt ever is to try to time of time a vehicle fix a vehicle that has uh plugs in the wrong spot so i'm just gonna label them all take off the distributor cap and lay it aside with the plug still on it and then hopefully put it all back together and the correct form so i took all the electronic plugs off of well everything but the coil i guess um, but I took it off the alternator, took the one off the AC, I took the main engine ground out. Um, I removed all but one vacuum line, which is kind of stuck back here right now. It's the one, another one that goes to the EGR. EGR computer, I guess. I labeled all of my plug wires. I'm gonna remove them here in a bit. And I also marked where number one is, just in case. Now I got all the wires unplugged and moved out of the way, except the spark plugs and the ignition coil. I need to loosen and remove the vacuum line that goes to your uh, power to your power brakes, and the fuel line to the back, back here. These fuel lines you got to be real careful with. Um, I have stripped them, two, three of these little adapters before. If you don't get them lined up perfectly, they get stripped. Uh, I stripped them when I put on the, the TBI spacer. So after further inspection, I was 100% wrong. Definitely wasn't the intake leaking. It's definitely the thermostat. Oops. Oops. Oh well. I needed a new intake anyways. So as you can see, I removed the TBI. Um, this return line has seen better days. Definitely it's kind of crimped right here and maybe you can see it better from this side, but you can see it's been spun a little bit. So I'm probably gonna have to replace that. Have the TBI off. Most of the, took all the EGR stuff off. Most everything, now I need to start taking off uh, coolant lines and stuff. So I got a small two and a half gallon jug under there. I'm just gonna drain the radiator. This little petcock valve over here. you can't see because everything is in the way but oh it's not a pet cock it's just a plug so even though I did plan on keeping that coolant looks like it's gonna drain off the oily nasty frame so Probably not going to keep that fluid anymore. So I found out why it was leaking. The housing wasn't on there. Or the actual thermostat wasn't in the hole correctly. So the housing couldn't seat all the way. So there was a small leak right there. It didn't matter how tight I got it or whatever. So yeah. Make sure I don't do that on the next one. Took the rotor cap off. And I might have screwed around and actually had this at top dead center when I uh, stopped it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark pointing towards, put a mark where it is pointing towards cylinder one so I know what orientation um, the rotor was in. Then I'm going to pull it out, put another mark where it came out so when I when I reinstall it, I'll know where to put it. At least that's what I've been told to do. Ah. Yeah, she's not looking bad for 175,000 miles. Next, I'm gonna clean up all these surfaces 
and everything around here, just everything on top of here is going to be cleaned up. It needs to be cleaned up. Throw a rag down in the valley, or yeah, I guess it's called the valley, just so I can keep as much uh, dirt and crap out of the out of the oil. And I put rags in all the all the intakes and um, coolant ports. Try to keep as, that as clean as possible. So I'm going to clean her up. I had an old uh, old guy tell me once a trick about to clean up your old bolts. He would take all of his old bolts, put them in an old paint can, throw some sand in there with them, and then drive down the gravel road. Well, sand, ATF, and diesel fuel, then drive down the gravel road. I don't really have any gravel, good gravel roads to go down. I don't have an empty paint can. So I'm thinking a body armor bottle, some sand, some ATF, and some Marvel Mystery Oil ought to do the trick. Went driving for about a half hour with this in the back of my truck. Didn't go down a gravel road, but drivers and the roads here are bad enough that it seemed like I went down a gravel road. So here's after I sprayed them all off. Eh, there's some of them that look pretty good. Like this one. Looks pretty clean. And then, then there's other bolts that are just still pretty gross. So Probably going to have to throw a I die through most of them to clean up the threads, but overall it worked decent. I guess maybe if I uh, would have left them in there a little longer, they probably would have got cleaned out. But I have no patience, so that's where we're at. Got it all cleaned up. I vacuumed all the ports, ran a vacuum down the middle, trying to keep as much stuff as I can out of there. I ran a tap through all the holes. I ran all the bolts through a die to clean them all up. New O-ring on the fuel lines. Words are hard. Ready to put the, the intake on. Well, ready to put the silicone, then the intake on. So I got my uh, silicone or RTV, whatever, all laid out. Probably not the prettiest, but I think it'll work. Have all the bolts in and started, not even finger tight. Um, for these small block Chevys, you're supposed to tighten up the center bolts first. I have the stud here, here, here. This one is for the bar that goes to the, the pulley or the tensioner. This one I'm going to use for a ground. This one I'm going to have to extend the bar that goes from the 
AC to here because it used to be an extra bolt like on top of here somewhere. So I'm going to put this one on here and I'm going to have to lengthen that bar about what two inches. torqued down turns out uh i'm kind of an idiot there was a pretty good gap there earlier and i was afraid that uh it was gonna leak so i took it off i actually called jags i was like i don't think this part's gonna work jags was awesome about it. they're like hey if it, you say it doesn't work all right send it back and we'll get you a new one and then i torqued it down this damn clamp has been on here for probably four years because I put a hose clamp on there and didn't just didn't take this one off but now it's finally off I hate these damn things I believe that these were made by the devil Injectors removed. Um, I'm going to shave this area down. Shave this area down, clean it all up, and yeah, it's supposed to add more airflow to it. I don't know if I believe it, but the internet says it works, so I'm going to give it a shot.
have it. Looks a lot smoother. There's not those ridges. It's not the cleanest job ever. I mean, you can see some, some spots where I messed up, but I left this little, these two little areas in there just because that's where the injector base plate goes and you're not going to add any, you're not going to save any uh, airflow there, but I didn't grind down the underside of the throttle bodies right here in the middle just because it's supposed to add a little bit of airflow, but I didn't do it because I didn't want to weaken those just in case, I don't know, I got a wild hair and it broke them in half or something like that. Next, I'm going to disassemble the injector perch, I guess. That's what I call it. And um, put a larger regulator spring or a spring with more tension on it. It's the same size. Um, so the fuel PSI should go up to 15. And I'm going to remove the injectors, just clean them, replace the filters, replace all the gaskets and everything. I've rebuilt this. It's been about five years ago, but it gets a little dirty. Needs rebuilt and cleaned out again, and I'm gonna add that extra spring. So when I rebuilt this last time, I didn't put the little washers in there, and that was just from lack of knowledge. Didn't know what I was doing. So I'm gonna make sure I do that when I rebuild them this time. have the TBI the I guess the injector perch injectors cleaned out and rebuilt now I'm gonna put the space well I gotta clean off all the gasket material off the bottom of this and then I'm gonna put the the spacer on here and then install it I decided that if one riser raising at about a quarter of an inch is good another riser raising about three-eighths of an inch will be better because that's how race cars work right
So we got power back. I installed the thermostat housing, the temp sensor, these two uh, plugs. Those are just sitting in there for um, the vacuum line for the brake booster and the heater core line. Here's the setup I'm gonna have. The one issue I'm seeing right now is this throttle So here's how I'm gonna weld her together. I'm adding this little, uh, keeping this little edge on here for a little more rigidity. I might put a little bar. Nah, this should be fine. What do you think? Decent welds. I don't know why my hands are shaking so bad right now. Looks like it got 
good enough penetration. I don't even need to put a bead on that side. I'm going to at the beginning. Tell me what you think of my welding abilities. I can take it, I swear. It's all done, welded together and installed. I used some blue uh, Loctite on those two bolts. Red's the only color I had of spray paint from when I worked, uh, worked at a tractor dealership, so I guess it's gonna be that pretty ugly red I got there, but whatever. Tech tip, if you're gonna be working over your intake, tape it off. It really sucks to drop a bolt down there and then sit for the next oh, hour and a half fishing it out with a magnet. It really would have sucked if it wouldn't have been a steel bolt. So, if this bolt is installed, this is where the other bolt needs to go on this line. I don't know what would be better to re-drill this hole or just to grind this out a little farther up here. So I decided I am going to grind this down to make this hole a lot better. Then I'll cut the tabs off. Um, but I'm going to reverse it so it'll suck this closer to the coil. So the fuel lines have a little extra room. I Okay, so I got the coil in. I got sucked as close to the distributor as I could. It's all bolted in there. And I got that one plug in there. Um, the next issue we have is what I'm going to do with the fuel lines. I think I could go straight there. If I remove the spacer, which... kind of sucks it down and puts it right where the the throttle linkage would go. So it would be right there and kind of get in its way even though if it was at a down angle. So put the spacer back. going to be kind of a reach but I think if I rebend the this piece which I bent up because I didn't think it was gonna fit right for the spacer I think it'll work maybe not as a, as an intensive angle as it used to be but something so the the fuel lines can travel you know right over the top of this into the back of here there's a little connection a little mount that's holding the fuel lines back there right back here on top of the transmission you probably can't see this but my fingers touching it um, that I'm gonna loose um, I'm gonna loosen it pull the fuel line through to get a little more um, a little more length so it'll actually reach the back of the TBI so basically all the work I did on this I'll have to redo, except the welding. I'm gonna keep the welded. I already fit all the all the connections in here, and they all fit and they work. So, yep, got a plan forward. So I have that extra bolt holding the fuel lines down removed. They have quite a bit more movement now. Um, I'm gonna install them. I'm gonna install everything and then just zip tie the fuel lines in place, make sure they're not rubbing on anything. I might add some rubber grommets in some areas so they don't rub, if they do rub, they're not gonna break, completely break. But yeah, I needed that extra just so I can connect to the back of the TBI. Next part of this project is gonna be this bar. Um, there used to be, on the other intake, there's a bolt right here that it just connects to.
Today I'm using a handle off the barbecue I didn't install because I didn't think I needed it to fix the 92. So how I'm gonna build this piece, I'm gonna take this rod that's quite a bit smaller, but whatever, it'll work. Mark it right here here and weld it so I'm going to mark this line right here and this line right here to know that if these two line up it should be right and then I'm going to take this piece mark and I know if I actually cut the line I just made or on this side of the line I should be good. Have it tacked together with awful looking tacks. And it seems to, I think it'll work need to finish welder welding her up I'm a grinder today not a welder well got her installed good and tight I had to put an extra washer down here because it was kind of rubbing right there but She's installed. When I put the TBI spacer on my intake, you could tell the spacer's a lot smaller than the actual holes on the intake. So I use the old hammer trick on this where you put a piece of, piece of paper on it and you kind of hammer around it so it makes an outline of it. You can still see the bolt holes. And then I cut out these holes. So. I'll put that on top of here and then I'm gonna cut out or grind down that little extra edges on here so this will match up the bottom of it will match up correctly to this so there is no edges um, and the top will still match up to the TBI's I marked out the holes with a permanent marker now I'm just gonna grind her down up now so uh, I'm gonna install the TBI well first things first I'm gonna cut some gaskets then install the TBI good enough for the girls I date never say that in front of your wife gets her upset I'm gonna hook up the fuel lines then move the TBI to exactly where I want it. I got the TBI with the spacer mounted. I put a piece of old gasket right there, taped it up and then zip tied it just, in, just so the fuel lines won't rub on the coil. I did uh, 
down there where the fuel lines run. I did uh, zip tie it to some other stuff just to make sure it doesn't rattle loose and build a hole in itself. So I got the throttle cable holder reinstalled. So I got all the cables installed. Luckily the throttle cable didn't need adjusting because um, it doesn't adjust. At least it didn't, it's how I saw it, this one. The transmission cable, uh, you push this button and it'll slide in and out. So you wanna put it out uh, wide open throttle and then push the button, that'll adjust that. Um, for this one, there's two clamps, two clips on the bottom of this that you pull together and this will pop up and then you this will slide in and out. Um, for this one, you wanna keep just regular and then push it down because it's, it's a, I guess a push cable instead of a pull. So just hold it regular and then adjust it. And then once it's adjusted at uh, idle, I guess, just let it go. I need to lash all these valves because, uh, well, they're all pretty loose. So I lashed the valves um, when one was at top dead center. And I lashed the valves when the six was at top dead center because the exact opposite valve should be open. So, I changed the oil, or I drained the oil so I can't start it right now. The only problem I have is I don't have the vents in it and I don't have the actual hardware I was going to do to install the vents. So I'm going to take some of the old hardware, cut it up, and jerry-rig it. Boom. And this one just fits right in there. Hopefully I don't have to drive too long or I don't have that much uh, positive pressure in my crankcase. Just so it won't blow that off. After doing all this work, I got to change the oil because there's probably some nasty stuff that actually made it to the oil pan. So I didn't take a picture of it, which I highly recommend doing. So, uh, my timing might be messed up, but yeah. Do what I say, not as I do. Actually, this is not an instructional video. This is for entertainment purposes only. But still, don't do that. Take a picture of it. <laughs> now I'm going to install the distributor. Okay. <clears throat> I have the, the lines that were pointed towards uh, cylinder number one. So this one was where the rotor should be pointed to begin with, and this is one is where it should be when it ended. It was pretty much at top dead center when I unhooked it. So let's uh, reinstall or do not forget the gasket. Shouldn't have put that hose in yet. There we go. And I do realize you probably weren't able to see any of that since my uh, hand was in the way. <clears throat> Next step, I'm going to install the spark plug wires back on the coil.
actual first start. Let's see if she did goes. Pretty sure my timing's off. That's not good. Have her at top dead center. I'm gonna pull the rotors or the cap and rotor. Number one cylinders at top dead center, and I just pulled the cap off of the distributor. And here's where the rotor's pointing. So I messed up and installed it wrong because I it should be pointing at cylinder number one at top dead center. So yeah, I messed up my timing. I'm gonna pull the distributor, rotate it a little bit, and then reinstall it. I want, once it's reinstalled, I want the rotor to be pointing at the number one cylinder. Right now it's kind of pointing straight forward. So, pull it out. It rotates a little bit. Then you can feel it. Rotate a little more. Reinstalled the distributor. It's pointing at uh, the number one cylinder. That cylinder is at top dead center. So the timing should be zeroed out right now. So I'm gonna install a new cap and rotor, tighten or get it somewhat tight, and then see what happens. Before I knew I was getting spark and there was problems with my timing, I got a new cap and rotor. So, I took both of them off and now I'm going to clean them. Clean the, I guess the post that the rotor goes on. Because it was pretty na nasty and gross. It's just a lot of corrosion on it. That could be part of my problem why I'm not getting a very strong spark. So, just getting a wire brush and going to town on it. New rotor. Just line it up. There's a notch in the bottom of the rotor and a notch in the post. Just line them up, push it on. Make sure you push it all the way down. They're kind of tight, so you gotta be uh, use some convincing. I marked where the number one spark plug will go. Now I just have to line it up right here and then put all the spark plugs back on and she should start. Should. To get my timing right, I had my wife crank the vehicle. And I got, sat out here with the timing light, timed it, timed to zero. I locked down the distributor. timing it I unplug this little port right here this is the electronic timing wire this is usually behind the big panel right here so I took that off unplug this like I said I had my wife sit in the vehicle why I sat out here and uh, looked at it through a timing light and we're at zero now so we're good to go so I've checked the timing like six times Replace the coil. It is. It does sound a lot better now, and I do have a, a stronger spark since I replaced the coil. I think what I'm going to try now is to just uh, start replacing, pull spark plugs, see what I see, start replacing them. Pulled the other four out of the passenger side. The only one that seems to have an issue was number eight. Was a little greasy and was a little wet. It wasn't greasy. It was wet, but. I don't think spark plugs was my issue. Well, pretty sure I uh, should have listened to everybody that was giving me advice on this. Pretty sure I was 180 out. I just swapped it or reversed the distributor. Let's see if she starts. This will be the first start.
an idiot. 180 out. tire spin because this one tire pot fire is getting a little a little old 